here's part 10 now, and we're going to be picking it up in the, cerebellar, uh, the cerebellum and its processing. Uh, we already in, uh, intimated in our previous episode that uh, we have a lot of information. We have the um, intentions of what we want to accomplish. Maybe we're shooting a basket at a, uh, at a hoop in a gym. Um, we're, also, uh, we're also learning about how much force we used and how smooth we, we uh, operated our systems based on uh, basal nuclei information. We have all this information about how uh, we uh, positioned uh, ourselves and what balance what balances were involved and then here we're going to put it together so um, number one here under cerebellar processing is that we figured out the uh, motor areas uh, that were used we know in terms of voluntary and voluntary muscle coordination and balance um, what the intention was okay and then um, the cerebellum receives information from proprioception in the body itself, tendons, ligaments. The more we do something and the more slowly and consciously we do it, of course, the more information we get. You might want to watch people do Tai Chi in the morning and uh, see uh, for those who have very, very long sequences of um, practices um, that they really get into processing a lot of information about proprioception, force of effort, and so on. Uh, the cerebellar uh, cortex calculates the best way from all this information to um, re-engage the intention and um, basically work with the body's posture, uh, effort, a smoothness of activity, that's basal nuclei, coordination of activities, and then um, basically at the very end it will dispatch a, um, a blueprint to the cerebellum to say, why don't you try this again? Okay, so I would submit to you that um, the intention itself may be stimulatory. You may be very up for the activity, uh, but it's going to take a lot of inhibition to sculpt the activity, if you know what I mean. They say that maturity and also mastery is 95% um, uh, inhibition. <laughs> um, and so you learn to sculpt uh, the intention so carefully that you get the correct result. Okay, so somebody that's been doing something for a very long time has um, fewer, uh, how shall I say, errors in their activity. They have smooth activity and they uh, have a very positive and uh, well-calculated result that is dependable. Okay, uh, most especially surgeons need to develop such things because they're working on living tissue and they have to get the correct result. Here we're actually looking at, um, oh, uh, they want to say a few more things that I should probably address. Uh, the cerebellum seems to have cognitive functions uh, that actually relay all the way to the frontal lobe and it's been found that the cerebellum really lights up when we're planning things and even uh, writing programs, those of you that are coders. Um, especially if you're using array systems in your coding um, and you're having to think through uh, sort of a three-dimensional array of ideas where things fit together or if, you're, or if you're an architect and that kind of kind of thing and you're doing spatial arrangements that the cerebellum plays a huge role in all of that activity, a very cognitive activity. Then we're going to get now into functional brain systems and we're beginning with the limbic system. The limbic system has to do with emotional richness and um, how that might get expressed, experienced, and so on. And uh, this is an area that we're going to actually be doing some follow-up with in terms of sleep uh, because we're going to be having a film in our um, playlist that includes um, Matthew Walker, uh, who is uh, at UC Berkeley and is head of the lab, the sleep lab, and uh, there's going to be a lot of biosynthesis and uh, use of these particular uh, features of the limbic system. Let's take a look here. Uh, we have some features that are associated with the teal encephalon. Uh, we have the uh, cingulate gyrus, this part right over here, not to be confused with the corpus callosum. Okay, then we have the um, all of these other features here, septal 
nuclei, amygdala, hippocampus is a, a particularly important in terms of memory, um, staging memory development. And also it turns out that um, sleep is uh, vitally important to the hippocampus. So you can't really learn things without sleep. Uh, and we'll get into that with that film that I'm going to be showing you. Dentate gyrus, uh, parahippocampal gyrus. Okay, so take a look at the uh, all of the positions here. This is a big circular unit. Um, we have the anterior thalamic nuclei. Okay, still a part of uh, what's going on here. Then we have the uh, hypothalamic and mammary body all playing a role. And um, then let's take a look here at the... Um, they go over a few things sort of bit by bit. Um in terms of the uh, limbic system and the emotional or affective uh, feelings aspect of the brain. So a lot of these things are, um, how would I say, um, value-oriented. There's things that we like and don't like, and uh, we like or don't like them in various ways based on our memories of the experience. Uh, we have odors uh, that, uh, how shall I say, um, are almost universally experienced in the rhine encephalon uh, aspect here of the limbic system. So um, it's one of those areas where smells play a huge role in uh, emotional uh, well-being and uh, stimulation, shall we say. Okay, the limbic system, there's also what we refer to as psychosomatic illnesses. And um, if we have uh, emotional disturbance based on various things and experiences that we're engaged in and which we're constantly uh, putting out a negative uh, a value for what the experience is, it's possible then to affect other parts of the body uh, because this is the main control area for the um, autonomic nervous system as well as the, um, the uh, endocrine system at a very high level. So emotions uh, matter and that uh, they can be practiced in different ways. And it's essential that we learn how to do that. And, uh, you know, we're not necessarily living in the culture where we all suddenly stop on the street and uh, decide to dance, um, as might be the case in uh, some of the more um, <laughs> um, Mediterranean countries uh, that my parents come from. My father... Uh, uh, their dances at the drop of a hat. But at any rate, um, so uh, we uh, look through this area to see how we react to things emotionally, and uh, we become consciously aware of the emotional richness. Um, and uh, this is an area that can override logic, and um, will have some things to do with uh, sleep, as I mentioned to you before. The reticular uh, formation has two properties to it. It's another system that we're going to need to consider here. And let's go to the page where it's depicted. Here it's depicted, actually. This is a system that is um, on during wakeful times, not during sleep times. And um, during sleep, we're engaged actually in repair, maintenance, growth of the human body. Um, we're restoring everything that has happened in our human body. In fact, there's even a question sometimes as to why are we awake because sleep is so beneficial to our uh, systems. And so um, at any rate, this is something that is unique to be, uh, wakefulness and usually has to have um, a visual uh, and an auditory component. Um, obviously, if you want to sleep well, you can put earplugs in and you can wear a little um, uh, perhaps something over your eyes. Um, and uh, keep out the light and it will actually help you with sleep because you won't be operating your reticular activating system. This is a system that actually promotes alertness and it's a, um, remember the circuitry, it's a reverberating circuit and uh, once started, it's hard to turn it off. A lot of times once you've woken up in the morning, you uh, can't always go back for a snooze because you've woken up and the reverberations have started. And so now you're committed, so to speak, to being awake. Um, and so, as again, it's uh, having to do with light and sound. 
reverberations and it wakes up the brain, as you can see here. Now, um, there are some consequences to this, which um, is also um, the fact that we can filter things with this. And so uh, on our next uh, episode here, uh, we'll get into that uh, combination of wakefulness and filtering.